So, hello everyone. So, on this video, we will discuss the radiology questions from INICT exam, and I'll also give you the broad themes. Broad themes are often repeated in the INI exams. So, whenever we are appearing for the INI exams, we need to keep in mind that they, even if they are not repeating the question, the topic tends to get repeated. So, look at the questions that I'm going to discuss with an idea that these topics can be repeated in future as well, and I'll also tell you how to approach them. And sometimes, you know, they ask a strange thing that a same question is asked twice, uh, like in this particular paper, same topic had two questions, which was achalasia cardia, and that is actually, sometimes it comes and it uh, may be a bonus for you or maybe a double geo party for you. So let's look at the INICT radiology question. Less questions, but all integrated, all with clinical relevance. No, uh, you know, unusual question in the paper. So let's see the first question here. The question is, a 34-year-old woman landed in Ames emergency after road traffic accident, GCS3, NCCT was normal, she was intubated. So what are you suspecting? Is it subarachnoid hemorrhage, extradural hemorrhage, cerebral contusion, diffuse axonal injury? Now, if it was SAH, the presentation would have been worst headache of the life and the patient would show sulcal hyperdensity on a CT scan. Extradural hematoma after the accident, you will see a patient with biconvex hematoma, you will see a patient with, uh, uh, you know, a lucid interval and that kind of history. Contusions on the other hand are seen in the uh, frontal and the temporal lobe due to coup counter coup mechanism. In this particular case, the CT scan actually was normal while the GCS was poor. So whenever we have in a patient with road traffic accident, if we have a poor GCS despite a normal CT, we think that we are dealing with injury at the neuron axon junction, injury at the gray white matter junction, which is leading to a, pure, a poor prognosis, which is called as diffuse axonal injury. Can it be picked up on CT? Yes, it can be picked up, but often the CT scan may be normal. Or you might see petechial hemorrhages at the gray white matter junction, corpus callosum, or you might see such petechial hemorrhages at the midbrain level. But if they say CT is normal, we are looking definitely at diffuse axonal injury. And just to you know show you that this is uh, the class image this year where we were discussing in the ultimate app live course. Uh, this is what I told you in the class. Diffuse axonal injury, CT scan may be normal. The next line I taught you in the class was investigation of choice is, <clears throat> which is a likely next year's question, is MRI. So investigation of choice for diffuse axonal injury is MRI and you have to look for, uh, you know, uh, petechial hemocytrin deposits at the gray white matter junction, at the corpus callosum or at the midbrain level which is seen on a MRI sequence called as SWI. So which MRI sequence will you use? Susceptibility weighted MRI to look for hemocytrin areas staining in the area of the injury. So CT scan may be normal, that is important. Most important site of injury will be gray white matter junction. So again you will see this was a direct hit from the class notes and I am sure most of the students were able to do it right. Now second particular question was, it is slightly you know indirect from the classes, so we will have to think about the question and the choices. So don't look at the image, there is no need to look at the image, you first need to look at the choices. Okay we have to rule out three conditions TB, rheumatoid arthritis, both are inflammatory diseases one is infective, other is um, you know uh, immune, autoimmune kind of a disease but the difference is rheumatoid arthritis typically would be involving the small joints of hand not hip uh, typically but it can involve uh, any joint that is for sure so that is in the choices ankylosing spondylitis and avascular necrosis so these are the choices that we are looking at. Let's start to think about what will we see in tuberculosis. TB will start with osteoporosis. As would rheumatoid arthritis also, the joint will have hypremia due to inflammation leading to periarticular osteoporosis. Then you will have erosions and then inflammation leads to uniform loss of joint space. Okay, so 
it means that if we are looking at TB or rheumatoid arthritis in the X-ray, I am not looking at the X-ray at all. The findings should be co coherent, co should be correlated to an inflammatory disease of the joint. So you should have osteoporosis, loss of joint space uniformly involving, no particular compartment should be spared and erosions. Okay. But then they sound similar, that means the findings in TB and rheumatoid on the X-ray will be similar. So even without looking at the history and the image, I think they will not be the answer because they both will have similar radiological findings. Okay. Now the third choice is ankylosing spondylitis. Ankylosing spondylitis, when it begins, if I am showing you X-ray of pelvis, I should be showing you sacroiliitis. If I zoom the X-ray for you and I want you to look at this area, this area, these are your SI joints. So you, can you see SI joints are clear, they are not fused, there is no erosions, there is no pseudo widening there. So what happens here is SI joint is normal, unlikely to be ankylosing spondylitis. TB and rheumatoid would have similar uniform loss of joint space when now is the time to look at the image. I am able to see some increased density in the femoral head with some flattening of the contour and a crescent like appearance here which you see in this particular area. And if you look at the joint space loss, in the superior compartment the joint space loss is more as compared to the medial compartment. All of this tells you that you are looking at a non-uniform loss of joint space which happens in secondary osteoarthritic changes. So this particular case has avascular necrosis with uh, secondary osteoarthritic changes. That is why the correct answer is AVN. But let us confirm with the history also, 70 year olds male. Again, you know, favoring the diagnosis here that you know, uh, ankylosing spondylitis would be a youngish patient, not an old person. So that is also uh, ruled out. Then they are saying there is no history of any drug intake or trauma. Although trauma or drug intake like steroids would have helped us to think of avascular necrosis, but AV AVN can be idiopathic as well. So, you know, based on whatever we are seeing, the single best answer would be avascular necrosis of the hip. Increased density, crescent like area of increased density, flattening of the contour, and non uniform loss of joint space. That is what we see in this particular case. Okay. Now, that was an indirect question where we had to think and that is one of the feedbacks that we got from the INI exam that everything was taught in the classes but there were questions where we needed to apply them into the question to solve them. Okay. Now, next image again, we look at the image, you know, we are definitely looking at the typical image of achalasia cardia. And the question is, which of the following is least useful investigation to confirm the diagnosis? least useful. Now, what is most useful? Manometry. Manometry, up, uh, upper GI endoscopy, barium solo you are already looking at one. So, barium is definitely useful. We are already looking at it. So, what is least useful? 24 hour pH monitoring is least useful out of the choices. But the funny part was, this was the second question. Which of the following will be the investigation of choice to confirm the diagnosis? How do you confirm the diagnosis of achalasia cardia? Manometry. Same choices, same image, two questions. One is saying best, one is saying uh, will least useful. Although not such a smart thing to do, out of 200 questions, two questions, which makes it at uh, like 1% of the questions are achalasia cardia with same image and same question. It is not good, but it happens in the real exams. So the answer here is manometry. I'm sure you got it right. And I'm sure you remember this is what we were discussing in the class. I told you that there is a role of G endoscopy and manometry here. And if you have to do mark one, manometry will be the answer. This is what I had marked when I was teaching you in the class. So I hope this gives you the idea that the paper was, you know, direct or indirectly there in your class notes. It was there, but you needed to apply it. And that is why if you have already done a regular course and you're rep repeating this year, I strongly recommend that you go for a test and discussion course where you have a course which will teach you to apply and after the uh, question there will be a good uh, longish discussion on the question and each choice which will formulate your thinking process for the real exam. Okay. So let's see the next question again. Uh, this one was a very good question where there were three images in the question. So this is a patient where you had a blunt trauma to the chest. In which of the following case will you do further evaluation before putting a chest tube in this patient? So, if we now zoom the images, 
the first image had a opacity in the left lower zone some people said maybe it was consolidation some people said maybe it is hemothorax because uh, a pulmonary contusion or a blood in the pleura we do not know we are not really sure on the x-ray although the cp angle looks a little clear but we st because it's a supine plate after the trauma I, I, what happens in a supine film the blood tends to you know accum uh, spread out so it is not necessary that you will see a C, you know it accumulating primarily at the cp angle so we do not know we do not know so uh, if it is uh, you know we will not be putting a chest tube immediately we need further evaluation to know second image you could see bowel loops going into the thoracic cavity so after a case of trauma it could be a diaphragmatic tear third image we had a pneumothorax with the visceral pleural sign pushing the mediastinum to the opposite side so out of the images only in the image number 3 which is pneumothorax you will put a chest tube without any further evaluation other two needs to be confirmed so the answer will be 1 and 2 in 1 and 2 you will need further evaluation before you think about chest tube in number 3 you can directly go and put a chest tube which is a question that was there in neat pg also this year finally there is a theme here although this is first time that they have asked a question on laryngeal cancer in with a image but every time in the ini exam they are asking ent radiology so uh, this particular case i will just help you with the anatomy this is your thyroid cartilage okay this is your thyroid cartilage this is your carotid artery internal jugular vein okay internal jugular vein carotid artery in carotid artery internal jugular vein let me zoom it so if you notice there is something extra sitting here which is not on the other side if you look at the jugular vein i want you to again spend a moment here because this is a difficult question here if you look at this jugular vein here it looks as if there is something which is lifting it up which is not there on the other side it could be a lymph node sitting here second thing is this is the area of your vocal cord area of your vocal cord and you can see there is a tumor sitting here yes you can see the tumor and the tumor seems to through and through invade the laryngeal cartilage and there is extra laryngeal spread now if it is very important if it is only involving the inner side of the thyroid cartilage the stage will be different it will be t3 but if it is invading it fully it will be a different stage so again we see there is uh, laryngeal clear cut cartilage invasion there is some thickening of the prevertebral space also there is a lymph node here all of this pointing towards t4 n1 m0 so we are looking at the stage t4 a an important thing also for your future exams is if they ask you what investigation should you do to look for laryngeal cartilage invasion so although in this particular question they are showing ct if they ask you ioc later on it will be mri mri is the investigation of choice for laryngeal cartilage invasion so i hope you get this question it was a unique question but i saw i have interacted with all the damsonians who have done well in the ini exam and i am i saw most of them were able to fix figure it out on the day of the exam all you needed to do was you had to look for the laryngeal cartilage invasion clear okay and finally although indirectly this is a question which i have shown you in my multiple of my classes this is how a hydrated cyst looks like uh, you can see a multi loculated appearance with multiple daughter cyst a cartwheel like appearance so this is hydrated cyst so in a hydrated cyst you do not do a fnac so that because you don't want to you know expose the patient for a hypersensitivity reaction so the question choice a and b are contradictory if you notice suppose you don't know anything but the first says cyst content can cause hypersensitivity if leaked second statement is saying fnac should be done to confirm the diagnosis so they are contradictory statements so what happens is if you are able to solve such a idea you are able to understand okay if they are saying contradictory one of them has to be the answer so the answer is b because the question was which of the following is the incorrect statement so i hope you know this gives you the idea and to end the discussion today i just wanted you to you know introduce you to the dr arnab who's got the rank 1 in this year's inict so when you look at a topper don't look at toppers with you know sometimes i see students who say are yaar iska aa gaya mera nahi aaya 
look at them with positivity and we have to clap for the winners why we should clap for the winners is because we clap to tell ourselves one day i will become a winner okay so it, he has done a big achievement he is a very humble boy and a very intelligent chap very down to earth very very you know and this is the celebration that happened in dams after his rank 1 and uh, his whole story is there on the damsel youtube channel when any time you have free you seek inspiration you can see those videos and you have to keep reminding yourself don't look at them with any kind of you know competition and any any kind of feeling that you know he has got it i have not think about it i will clap for him today the world will clap for me tomorrow and second thing is second important thing is when you see the toppers when you see the their parents imagine your parents in that position when you see the toppers imagine yourself in that position and think about what will i say when i reach there it does not matter if you are from a peripheral college it does not matter if you are from a new college from a foreign college or a private college what matters is do you truly believe that main bheed se alag hu agar main bheed se alag hu to main logon ki baatein nahi sununga apne liye sochunga ki main kaise bada chal sakta hu bahut zaruri baat hai stop looking at examples of success around you okay and that is very important sometimes i meet students who say mere college se to kisi ka nahi aaya koi baat nahi lekin jisko aap youtube channel pe dekh ke lagta hai yaar ye apne type ka hai uski aage to meri bhi rank aa sakti hai aap bheed se alag hain aap jo doctor yahan tak bane hain wo aam baat nahi hai to aage bhi badhiya kar payenge bheed se alag hain to abhi mehnat karenge aur aage aur legend banayenge i wish you all all the best